You've probably seen the dry plants before in Minecraft Bedrock, where the world breaks much closer to spawn. In Java Edition they are so far out that you'll never see them without modifying the game. So in this video I will push Minecraft team there far beyond its normal limits, just to see what actually happens when you keep going. Here we have the first limit in this version, the Farlands. This is the first version of Minecraft where they appear in their normal location and shape, because it uses the world generation system that's still the basis for the rain generation today. In the unmodified clan the world stops generating at around 32 million blocks. Beyond this a hard limit and a bug in the lighting code caused the game to leak memory and eventually crash. At this point the vanilla game can't go any further, but I've made a modification that lets us continue. In my 64-bit version I've disabled lighting decorations and other systems that aren't compatible to save time. This gives performance reasonable and lets us explore areas beyond the 32 million block limit. I haven't generated worlds past this limit yet for now, we're just looking at this series slice at the edge of InfDev. Now we can go past the 32-bit integer limit and the world keeps generating, though it's not solid since I haven't fixed collisions to the 64-bit numbers. At certain points far beyond the normal world limits, the range generation behaves in surprising ways. Here you can see the edge of the farlands where the normally flat layers break up. At this spot an overflow occurs and terrain repeats. If we go even further the farlands end and terrain looks completely normal again. Later the farlands appear again and end at the next power of 2. Here's the exact spot where they finally end and terrain generates normally once again. Next we have the stripe lands, a rendering glitch that happens when the game can no longer represent every block position. At this distance movement becomes impossible unless I move a whole block at a time. This occurs so far out because Java Edition uses doubles for rendering, so the effect only appears far out. In Bedrock Edition which uses float the same glitch happens much closer to spawn. The next glitch occurs at the next power of 2. At this point the game can no longer render blocks properly. When only one direction breaks the terrain doesn't disappear entirely, instead it collapses into flat paper thin slices, almost like 2D sprites in a 3D world. And once both directions pass this point the rendering completely falls apart. There is still terrain being generated but the game can't draw any of it anymore, leaving you in a void where nothing can be rendered at all. Even so the terrain is still there. As I fall you can see the normal underwater overlay appear, proving that blocks and fluids exist. The game just isn't able to render them anymore. Finally we reach the very last limit. Just like in an unmodified 32-bit clan the world eventually stops generating altogether. And those are all the limits in this version of Minecraft. All of this happened because the world cannot ever be truly infinite. No matter how you build a game you eventually have to store real positions somewhere. And that means there will always be a point where things start to break. Using bigger numbers just pushes those limits further away. In a regular 32-bit world these kinds of glitches show up much closer to spawn. With 64-bit numbers they are so far out that reaching them would take longer than a lifetime of walking. You can work around some of these problems especially in rendering. But the limits never truly disappear. They are just waiting, far beyond where anyone was ever meant to go.